Welcome to the Life United Podcast. We are all about helping you know God, find freedom, discover your purpose, and make a difference. We know that today's message is going to be a blessing to you. Um, I want to just share with you today, um, I had a phone conversation, let's see, was it, I think it was Friday, and uh, Becky and I, you know, we have a little savings that we set aside and over the years, and, and uh, we have this, um, I don't even know why they, normally they don't even me- mess with people that don't have very much money, but, but for some reason they gave me favor, and this particular investment company, they took my, our little savings and were, you know, have been watching over it, and so I got a call from, from the guy, uh, he never calls me. You know, I don't have enough for him to talk to about, I guess. I don't know. But he never calls me. But, but I get a phone call. Hey, how you doing? And I said, I'm doing good. How are you doing? He said, well, I just wanted to know if you were about to fall off the ledge over all this stuff that's going on um, in the Ukraine. And I said, no, I'm not anywhere near the ledge. I'm, not, I'm, I'm doing fine. And uh, he said, you know, and then he went through his, well, the markets are saying this and they're doing this. And, you know, we're, you know, and all the strategies and all the things that they, they're, they're doing. And, and um, I said, well, that's good. I mean, I, I really don't even pay any attention to it. I, I don't even fret over it. I don't, you know. Uh, but anyway, I said, well, that's good. And he said, yeah. He said, uh, I don't know what's going to happen over there, uh, but we feel like this, this, and this. I said, well, I know exactly what's going to happen. He said, he got real quiet, you know, and he, I said, yeah, I know exactly what's going to happen. It may not happen tomorrow, but it's going to happen. And I just started telling him what I'm fixing to tell you about Russia. And I started telling him all that. And I've never seen anybody want to get off the phone any quicker than <laughs> anybody in my life. He did not want to hear anything I had to say. But the bottom line is what I'm going to say and what he should have listened to me about is actually what's going to take place. Do you know why? Because God said it would. Not because of man, not because of politics, because God said it would. And so I just want to share a little bit with you today. We've got, we're in our series Headspace, so I want to get in your head today. And I want to help you. Because, I, uh, listen, there's some, there's some pretty wild things happening. And uh, so he hung up, and I, God bless him, I hung, you know. But, but I mean, um, you can't, is, nothing you can do to change your investment strategy when God's doing stuff. You just do what you can. You can't go buy gold. I hear people say, well, hey, you need to buy gold. Man, it, it'll, listen, do you know that in Revelations it says that you can't even buy a, br- a loaf of bread for a brick of gold? So don't kid yourself into thinking you're going to outsmart the end times. You're not. You're not going to. There's no strategy on earth except serving God, walking with God, listening to the Holy Spirit that's going to keep you uh, in any season of life that you're in. So I know you're, you know, I mean, I know people that may have made lots of money off of gold. I know people that have bought it, it and they still can't get rid of it because they paid too much for it. So you're just going to have to trust God. And I, that, that might shake some of you up, but you just need to understand that. Amen. Well, I've got money in the bank. Well, you do today. All right, I better hush. Here's the word of the Lord, okay? And I'm going to read you this out of Ezekiel, then I'm going to talk to you a little bit about this. Because you have to have your head on straight about the world and the end times. You can't get caught up in the strategies of the world and, and, and think you can change certain things that you can't change. Ezekiel chapter 38, I'm going to read a a few verses here to you, and then I'm going to talk to you about this for a few minutes. The word of the Lord came unto me, saying, this is Ezekiel talking, Son of man, set your face against Gog of the land of Magog, the prince of Rosh, Meshach, and Tubal, and prophesy against him, and say... Thus says the Lord God, I am against you, O Gog, 
the prince of Rosh, Meshach, and Tubal. I will turn you around, put hooks in your jaws, lead you out with all your armies, horses, horsemen, all splendidly clothed in a great company with bucklers and shields and all handling swords. Persia, Ethiopia, Libya are with them of all them that with the shield and the helmet. Gomer and all its troops, the house of Togomar from the far north and all its troops. And many people are with you. Prepare yourself and be ready and all your, now listen, all your companies that are gathered about you and be a, be a guard for them. Now, I'm not going to go any further with this because I want you to listen to me. If you understand the word of the Lord here and you look at these nations, you're going to find out that these are the nations that are right now actively involved in what's going on in the Ukraine. Okay? You need to understand that. Now, a lot of people get upset when you say things like this, and the Ukraine in general, not specifically a border, because the borders have changed a lot, but that region is part of this bunch. Yeah, but there are Christians there. There are Christians all over the world. That's what we're here for. You know that, right? <laughs> so that wherever you go in the world, Jesus is glorified. So, the thing that you have to understand, if you, if you were here New Year's Eve, you remember what I said, that the migration of the nations has begun. Okay? So, don't look at this like it's some outlier or something that, well, this will be over and we'll get back to normal. There is no more normal. Every sign, everything is pointing toward the end. Now, is it imminent? I don't know. But I can tell you how you ought to live in the midst of it and how you ought to operate in the midst of it. Now, there were words thrown out here. There were names thrown out here. And the first one is Gog. Now, listen to this. Of the land of Magog. That's a person. Now, I'm not saying that that's Putin, but it could be. Why? Because he's from the right place, seemingly at the right time, doing exactly what the Word of God says he should be doing. Okay? So, you just need to understand that Magog is actually part of the old Soviet Union. It's Kazakhstan, it's uh, uh, Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan. All the stands up there in the northeast, including possibly even Afghanistan, are part of that. And then Rosh is the same area that we call Russia today. So it's no, this is not some kind of secret code. It's just facts. The, the word here where it says Meshach and Tubal, that's part, that's part of Turkey. Where it talks about Persia, that's Iran. Does that sound familiar to anybody? Or all these names? It's not like we're talking about, yeah, the United States is one of those. No, we know these countries. We know what they stand for. It's no surprise. You go on in, in, in parts of, of uh, uh, it's called um, uh, Cush, and, it's, and sometimes it's translated Ethiopia, but the boundaries of that nation were not what is modern day Ethiopia, it's the Sudan. So, so they're all they're all, they're they're all a part of this, and then it talks. It goes on to talk about other ones like Togomar and Gomer, which are part of of uh, Turkey, parts of it are Turkey, but part of that is the Crimean Peninsula and Ukraine. Now, listen, just so you understand this, and I'm gonna get. Well, let me just do this, and I'll get into this. But you've got to understand something. Listen. There are God's people there, and what's going on is not right. But here's the good news about it. God said, I'm against you. I'm not for you. I'm against you. Okay? So you just need to understand that, that God's not making this happen because he likes them. 
He's against them, but yet there are things that have to be dealt with, and we don't know all the things in the realm of the Spirit that are being dealt with with all this. We don't know. We don't know. But see, if, you, if your value is in your physical nation, America, and not in the kingdom of God, His nation, then you're going to get upset about stuff like this, especially if it gets closer to home. I remember I told Becky I went to the grocery store for her yesterday. <laughs> if I want something to eat, I have to go to the grocery store. <laughs> but but I noticed the shelves were not full. You know, we're used to the shelves being full of everything. And it reminded me of, the, of, of going to Russia during the Cold War, during uh, uh, communism in Russia, and going in a grocery store, and the shelves were almost completely empty. They had nothing. You could buy some beets or some potatoes, or that was about it, nothing. And it just dawned on me, you know, things are rapidly changing. You, some of you get mad because you can't get the chips you want. All right, but here's the point. You've got all of these nations, and I'm not going to spend my time talking about them. They are led by Gog of Magog, which is, that, which is Russia in that, in, that, in that area. So you've got to understand, this is not something that's hidden. It's pretty plain spoken that this is the case and that God is against them. Their purpose is eventually they are going to go to Israel. And they're going to attack Israel, and it's going to be so much killing that it'll take seven months for them just to clean up all the dead bodies. That's not, listen, that is not something, listen to me, that is not something that is made up. It's in the Word of God, and it's, it's, it's for this day that we live in today. Now, here's the good news about it. Number one is that God is against them. But it also says that he is going to put his hooks in their jaws and they are not going to be able to do anything else. Listen, Judas could do nothing but what the word of God said because he yielded himself to that. And now that this is yielded, the hooks are set. Now, is that going to happen tomorrow? I have no idea what the timetable is have no idea. And that's not my point today to give you a timetable. But the times are here. Okay. And you better learn to live with the times as a believer. I'm not trying to scare you today. I'm trying to provoke you to be what God wants you to be. Live the life he wants you to live and be ready for whatever comes. The good news is it says over in verse 13, it talks about a group of nations that question them, doesn't confront them, but questions them. So apparently they're not with them. Okay? And here are these nations, Sheba, Dedan, the merchants of Tarshish, and all their young lions will say, have you come to plunder? In other words, they will question what they're doing. It's interesting that these nations that we're talking about here, this she, Sheba and, she, and, and Shedan, that, that, that those nations are really closely resembling the southern Arab nations in Saudi Arabia. It's also interesting that they're the ones that have developed a relationship with Israel. But it's interesting also that there are other nations that are mentioned, and it's called the merchants of Tarshish. If you, now, I know I'm not going to get into the details of this today. You're just going to have to trust me. Go study it out for yourself. That's England and all of the merchant nations in that area. Another one is Spain. 
and they're, they're, they're Portugal. There should be, there could be some others in that region that are part of that group. They're trader countries. They're merchant countries. And that's who they are. But it also goes on to say, now listen to this. And all their young lions, all their young lions, those are the ones that are out, that are products of those merchants. Canada. I know you don't have much to say about Canada right now, but Canada, the United States, all of these came from the British Empire, from, the Brit, from, from Britain. You got, you got what I'm saying? Listen. Okay, Canada, Australia, New Zealand. And see, so you're thinking, well, well, what about the? You can't figure it out today. I'm just telling you. But you know, there are some others that are very interesting that are part of that. They were part of the British Empire. One of them's India. So what does that tell you? That tells you that not everybody's getting on board for all of everything that's going on. And there, that there is resistance. Doesn't mean you're going to stop it. But there is resistance. Now, now, the reason I'm telling you all this is because if your mindset is not right toward the world and you're just thinking geopolitically, then you're, you're never going to be able to comprehend or understand or, or even reconcile God doing all this stuff or being involved with all this. Especially when everywhere that you go, there are Believers. Well, all that's not going to happen until we're taken out of here. That's not true. That's not true. Now, I believe that before the, the seven-year tribulation period, we're going to be gone. I believe that with all my heart. But I want to tell you something. There's a lot that's going to take place for the alignment of the nations, for the shiftings that have to take place for that to happen that you and I are going to see. And you better get your head straight. You better put yourself, and I'm going to show you from the Word here in a little bit about this. But here's the thing. The hook is set. Okay? Say, well, what if it's not Putin? What if somebody kills him? Then somebody else is going to rise up. What about all the Christians in Russia? What about them? Thank God they're there. See, we have the idea, we have a, demo, a democratic religious liberty mentality, which is really, if you go back and study the history of the church, is, is really hadn't, hadn't been there very long. Okay. So, let me ask you this question. Would you pray for the Ukraine if you had family there? Listen, we, we, we have supported in the past uh, uh, orphanages over there. We actually had one that took children that were, that were uh, affected by Chernobyl, which is in the Ukraine, uh, which if you don't know more about, about that, it was a nuclear plant that blew up and, and, and it that all the babies, some of the babies were just horrible, the, the, the effects that it had had on them. And um, so we, we supported them during that season when they were taking care of those children. We have missionaries that we've supported over there over the years. We have churches that we've been, I've preached over there in churches. And so we have a relationship. There are a lot of believers in that nation, a lot of believers in that nation. So, so well, I don't have any family over there. Yes, you do. Yeah, you do. See, your mentality has got to be that those people are part of the body of Christ that are in that nation. We need to pray for them. What do you pray? Protect them. Deliver them. You, 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 you want to tell God, to, okay, God, they need to win that war. Well, wait a minute. What if, he, what if that's not what, what's on tap? What if the hook is set so strong that that can't be changed? You better wake up and listen to what I'm saying. 
your strongest suit is that you are a born-again child of God. You have family all over the world, and we need to be praying for them. Yesterday afternoon, I was praying for them. And so, well, what do you pray? Well, sometimes you have to pray in the Spirit because you don't know how to pray as you ought to pray. But, I mean, there were several times where I, where I was praying protection over them and deliverance over them. There are some great people in great churches and people that love God over there. So we are the body of Christ, and we've got to understand that. No matter what's going on, we've, we've got to pray for, for, for the brethren. If you want to pray for the war, I'd like to know how you're going to pray for that. I, I don't want war. No, nobody wants war. Well, we can stop it. Maybe you can, maybe you can't. Depends on the timing. Now, one good thing is this, okay? Listen. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, Paul wrote a letter to the church at Thessalonica, a second letter, because they thought that the, um, uh, they, they actually thought that the um, Antichrist had already come. Uh, and I mean, they thought that, they, that, that Jesus had already come, that it was over, they were in the tribulation, it, it, was, it was bad. That's what they thought. They got wrong teaching. So Paul wrote them a letter to straighten them out. And he talked about the fact that as long as the church is here, listen to me, there's authority. Listen, when we leave, you're talking about a mess. But as long as we're here, listen to what Paul said. Now you know, he's talking about the church, what is restraining that he may be revealed the Antichrist in his time, for the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he's taken out of the way. Do you understand that we are the restraining force right now in this world? So that Antichrist spirit is always working. That spirit of lawlessness is always working. And it, and it always wants to get ahead of itself. It wants to do what it wants to do. And the only thing stopping it from doing what it wants to do and, and the destiny that it, it's eventually going to have anyway is you and I praying. You and I are praying, not only praying, there's more to it, but we have to be the restraining force. We have to be responsible. Quit, quit wondering what's going to happen and start declaring what's going to happen the best you can. Not the war as much as it is the people. Maybe it is time, but if it's not, then this war is not going to succeed. It's not going to not succeed because of just because of people, it's going to not succeed because the body of Christ is going to say, no, you're not having Ukraine. If it's not time, you're not having them. No, devil, you're not having them. No, you can't have God's people in that nation. We're not going to allow it in the name of Jesus. Whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth is loose in heaven. You've got to make up your mind you're going to do something more than just watch the stinking news. How many of you still love me? You got to pay attention. Well, I don't, I say, I'm going to come to church to feel good. Well, you're going to find yourself in a bad spot. You're going to have to learn how to feel good without anybody. So we have to pray and resist that spirit until the time. And we don't know that time. Our job is not to be passive. I'm telling you, when I started preaching to that guy on the phone the other day, I mean, it, it shocked him. First of all, that I knew more than he did. As far as world events were concerned. You know more than the world knows. Go read the end of the book. We know how this thing ends up. But see, you've got to, if, you're, if your perspective is, now don't, don't get upset with me when I say this. Your little American gospel that keeps you free and comfortable and everything's okay and we're going to make it and the rest of the world, well, God bless them. You're mistaken. You're mistaken. You, you, we've got to be the church. 
And it's got to be in the forefront of your thinking. And you've got to put the Word of God in your mind and in your heart. Because when things start popping, you better be ready. So let me just show you this from the Word of God. And, I, and this is going to help you today. And I'm not going to read all these scriptures. I'm going to talk, just talk to you about some of them for the sake of time. But, but listen to this. In Luke chapter 21, Jesus spells it out. Not only does he spell it out, but he tells us what we ought to do as believers. He didn't tell us, oh, well, you know, you're going to get to avoid all the problems. You're just going to live a comfortable life. Listen, there are a lot of Christians not living comfortable lives right now. They're being persecuted. They're being thrown in prisons. It's not part of the gospel life for you just to be comfortable till the end. Thank God God's blessed us. He's blessed us as a nation. It's like what John said. Even in tribulation, people were given and God was blessed them. God can do that. But you've got to understand something. Listen to me. That we're living in a volatile world that's not going to ever calm down until there is a cease for a moment when everybody says, peace, peace, and then all of a sudden the end comes. <laughs> I'd rather walk in another kind of peace. And that's the peace of God. That's where you have to live your life. That's what the Word of God tells us. That we have to, you've got to make up your mind that that's how you're going to live. And you're not going to live uh, any other way. That's how you're going to live every life, every day. Jesus said, peace I leave with you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. You've got to understand that. You've got to realize that. I mean, we've already gone through a pandemic, and everybody's kind of taking a, a breath going, Phew. hey, remember what I said New Year's Eve? I know I'm reminding you, but you might ought to pay attention, okay? We're going to have a lot of ups and downs this year. So you better be ready to live the way you should. So in this, in this Luke chapter 21, Jesus, it is a total prophetic chapter. Okay, and I'm not going to go verse by verse or anything like that. Let me just explain it to you. First of all, Jesus predicted the destruction of the temple. He said, hey, this temple is going to be destroyed. And it was. The Bible uh, not only tells us this, but history tells us that it was fulfilled in 70 A.D. The whole temple was destroyed. Well, Jesus prophesied it in this chapter. So if you'd been here before 70 A.D., you could have gotten up on the platform and said, hey, the temple's going to be destroyed because Jesus said, and everybody would have mocked you and laughed at you, but it happened. So we, we see that happening. Then Jesus starts telling them the signs of the end because they ask him, How, what, how's this going to happen and what's going to be the signs of the end? And so Jesus started teaching them about this. And he gave them the signs of the times. And, and Matthew's account of this in, in Matthew 24, 8, called it the beginning of sorrows. Isn't this a fiery message today? The beginning of sorrows. <laughs> hey, we're not living for this world, folks. I mean, listen, now, we can take advantage of everything we can take advantage of and enjoy our life to a certain degree, but, but there may come a time when you can't do what you used to do. And I don't want to be such an abrupt change in your life, you can't get over it. Somehow you want to blame God for it or you've got to be careful how you, how you focus and how you live your life. And so Jesus said in, in Luke chapter 21, beginning in verse 7, listen to this. They asked him, teacher, how, when are these things going to take place? And Jesus said in verse 8, take heed that you be not deceived. For many will come in my name and say, I'm here. The time, now listen to this, you, you got to hear this. The time is drawn near, therefore do not go after them. When you hear of wars, commotions or disturbances, do not be 
terrified. The, the, the definition of the word terrified there is scared. <laughs> scared. I'm scared. No, do not be terrified. D don't get caught up and be terrified about what's going on. Now listen to this next verse. You ready? For these things, what? Must come to pass first. But the end will not come immediately. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then he said to them, nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes in various places, famines, pestilence. That's plagues. That's COVID. And there will be fearful sights and great signs from the heavens. You got that? Wars, commotions. Those are warnings of the end. Don't be afraid. Don't be terrified. There will be insurrections, disturbance, disorder, confusion. But the end's not immediate. Then it says, it says in, verse, in verse 10, nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. All these natural signs, earthquakes, commotions, uh, Hurricanes, that's what it means. Uh, earthquakes, famine, plagues, frightening things. Frightening things. Am I trying to scare you? No, I don't want you to be afraid. That's not my point today. That's just the opposite of what I want. I want you to rise up. And we'll show you that from the word here in a minute. And, and then Jesus goes on and then talks about the destruction of Israel, of Jerusalem. And he prophesied that the children of Israel would be led away captive and trodden down, it says. You know that happened? Children of Israel were totally left Israel everywhere all over the world. And they were to be that way for a season and I like what it says in verse 24, listen to this, until the times of the Gentiles was fulfilled. Do you know the times of the Gentiles? That's you, by the way. If you're not a Jew, that's you. Uh, those times have been fulfilled. How do you know? Because Jesus gave another prophecy in here about the fig tree. And that's Israel. And that when it starts to blossom, that means people come back. Israel becomes fertile again. People start coming back. That's when the hooks are set. That's where we are. The time has come. The time of the Gentiles has been fulfilled. And Jesus said, uh, that's the beginning of the end. That's the beginning of the end. That, that, that's the beginning of it. That's the beginning of the end. And so then they, Jesus started talking to him about uh, the signs of his return. Okay. There will be signs in the sun in verse 25 and in the moon and in the stars and on the earth. Distress of nations with perplexity. The sea and the waves roaring. Now listen to this next verse. You ready? Men's hearts failing them from fear and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven will be shaken. Wow. How do I get out of that? You don't. Yeah. Unless you want to go jump off a building somewhere. I'm just, it's, it's, listen, listen to me. Listen. It will probably be worse in some places than others. Oh, God, make me one of those places. It's not so bad. Okay. But the point you've got to understand is that, that, that we're starting to see all of these things ramp up. We're starting to see the signs greater and more powerful than we ever have. And what we're seeing right now with Russia invading the Ukraine is a small part of that.
So Jesus said, those things are going to happen before I come back. So the last thing Jesus did was he wanted to talk to him about, here's what's important. Okay. At the end of the chapter, after all this, he said, here's what's important. And I, I, I really believe with all my heart, Jesus was looking down the road to talk to you today. He wasn't just talking to the disciples. He was talking to you today. He was talking to me today. He said, this is what is important. In verse 28, listen to what Jesus said, Luke 21, 28. When these things begin to happen, look up, lift up your head, because your redemption draws nigh. Look up, lift up your head, because your redemption draws nigh. Those are instructions. Now, you know, you can really make a really good religious message out of that. Look up. Lift your head. But you know, that's actually not what that is talking about. When Jesus said look up, the word there means to stand up or to stand upright. Stand up. As a child of God, stand up. It, it, it means to raise oneself erect. And that implies at some point you've been bowed down or bow, bent over. The same, script, the same terminology is used with the woman with the issue of blood. The Bible says she was bent over. She couldn't raise up. She was bent over and, and for 18 years and could in no way raise herself up. She was bent over. Really, I believe that's the way the body of Christ has been, been bent over, looking down, looking at ourselves. Could in no wise raise up. But when Jesus saw her, he said, woman, you are loose from your infirmity. He laid his hands on her and she was made straight and glorified God. And they got upset with him. And Jesus said, she's a daughter of Abraham. She ought to be standing up straight. She ought to be standing up that way. You know, you're, you're a child of Abraham as well, because if you're in Christ, you're Abraham's seed. You're heirs according to the promise. You've got to stand up. You've got, to, you've got to rise up. You've, got to, you've been bent over too long looking at things that are, don't, or really don't mean anything. You've got to stand up and, and raise yourself up erect. Ephesians 6, 13, the Amplified Bible says this. Therefore, put on the complete armor that you may be able to resist and stand your ground on the evil day of danger. Having done all the crisis demands, now listen to this, stand firmly in your place. You are a born again child of God. You have authority. You are, you are a people of God right in the midst of all the turmoil. And on one side there can be complete darkness. And on the other side, Isaiah says, the glory of God can arise upon the people of God. The only answer, listen to me, is you. We've got to rise up. We've got to stand up in the midst of trouble, in the midst of evil. I just don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Well, I know what to do. I'm going to worship God. I'm going to speak the word of God. I'm going to pray. I'm going to declare the word of God. Well, but my life is just turned upside down. No, it hadn't. What you're telling me is that your societal life is turned upside down. If you're a child of God, you only got one way, and that's up. And you're, that's standing up with your back straight, believing God, expecting God to move. Well, what happens if, if I lose my job? Well, God will provide. God will provide another one. You have to stand victorious, the Bible says, in the evil day. In fact, I like what uh, this, this scripture, when it talks about stand, it says to be intact of family or kingdom and to escape in safety. It means to uphold or sustain the authority of the force of something. See, when it talks about standing up in the evil day, it's not talking about 
It's talking about standing up with your armor on, declaring the things of God, expecting God to work, and where people are broken down, trodden, and beat up, you're there to help them and to lift them up and to pray over them and to see God work right in the, listen to me, right in the midst of all the evil of the day. Or you can just go along with it. How miserable a life is that? So it said, it says that uh, the, the Word of God tells us that, that, that we're supposed to look up. And I, I, like what, I like what it says. It says to lift up your head. To raise yourself up. Not in your own strength. But one translation says this. To raise, uh, to demonstrate pride and joy in Christ. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Demonstrating our pride and our joy in Christ. Psalm 3.3 3 says this, But you, O Lord, are a shield for me, my glory, and the one who lifts my head. You've got to make up your mind that your attitude is going to be different. You're going to have to put Jesus first in your life. You're going to have to make up your mind. You're going to walk in an upright position. You're going to declare who you are and what God says. And it doesn't matter where you are. Well, I might lose my job. Listen to me. I'd rather lose my job. You're not going to fire me, are you? I'd rather lose my job than to not be able to declare the glory of God. You've got to make up your mind how you're going to live your life. What are you going to do with your life? Well, I'm just battling my, my own little troubles right now. You know, sometimes I think that's our problem. We get our focus so much on our little troubles. Paul said one time that he had this slight trouble of the passing hour. Have you ever read Paul's troubles? I don't think I'd be calling them slight but you know what? He was so focused on what God had for him. It didn't matter. You're going to have to make up your mind. I'm going to look at something else. I'm going to lift my head. God's going to strengthen me. I'm going to stand up. And I'm going to be what God's called me to be in the midst of all of this. There's something about a believer who rises up and stands in time of difficulty that God responds to. You just go read the Word of God. When there is a believer, even in the Old Testament, if they're willing to stand up and be bold and to speak the Word of God and declare the glory of God, we read about it in the, in the Bible all the time. But we can be that person. Well, it's going to upset my world. Your world's going to get upset whether you do it or not. You might as well, you might as well be the one in charge of upsetting it. If it's going to get upset, I might as well be the one in charge of that. Because listen, it's just like the phone call I had. That just came out of me. I actually wasn't going to preach this today. I had another message, but I was felt compelled to just to do this. I realized just that coming out of me to a, uh, somebody who was not a believer, he said, well, he, and he probably goes to church. He had no clue what I was talking about. But when you know, and you can communicate with other people, it's amazing. It's amazing what God can do. But you've got to rise up. You've got to stand up. Lift your, lift your head and lift your eyes and let God work in your life. Last thing, listen to this. In verse 36, Jesus was talking here about telling us what we're supposed to do, okay? How we're supposed to handle this. Luke chapter 21, verse 34, Jesus said, Watch therefore and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and stand before the Son of Man. Jesus didn't say pray. Put that scripture back up. Listen to this. Je Jesus didn't say pray so you, that God will count you worthy. He said because you pray, you will be counted worthy. When you put yourself in a spiritual position, you put yourself in a position to be delivered. 
for God to work in your life. When you put yourself in, you know, well, I prayed on the way to work. That's good. How about praying before you go to work? You'd be amazed at how better, much better your work would go. So watch and pray. One translation says that you have full strength and ability in difficult times. You've got to make up your mind how you're going to live your life. It's time for us to stand up. It's time for us to lift up our heads. It's time for us to live a different way. One translation says this in verse 36, that you may have strength to escape all these things that will take place. What is he talking about? All the things we just talked about. That they, they, will, be, they will take place. It depends on how you're going to face it, how you're going to live. And listen to me, there are, there are people around you every day that are living in fear. They're terrified. They're terrified of COVID. They're terrified of what's going on. And it, it's going to reach closer to home. I'm just telling you. So you better be ready. And now is the season for you to be ready. Jesus said this in Luke 21, verse 34. Take heed to yourself, all in this same chapter. Take heed in yourself, lest your heart be weighed down by carousing, drunkenness, and cares of this life. And that day come on you unexpectedly. If you allow this stuff to start weighing you down, I, hey, I pray you, you're not, you don't drink, that you're not a drunkard. I, I pray that you don't do that. But here's the one carousing I could talk about carousing I used to be one of those but listen here's the one I think is more prevalent than anything it's cares of this life the things of this life the word there cares means distractions we got so many things going on you might want to evaluate what you got going on and you need to make sure you understand what's really important and you say, well, but I got time now. Everything's fine. Yeah, today. But we're preparing, for, we're preparing for the end. We're not preparing just to live life. We're preparing for the end. Now, that doesn't mean God won't bless you. He won't help you. He won't work with you. There's nothing wrong with enjoying life. But when you start getting over there where it's starting to distract you, I want to tell you something, you're in, you, you, you've got, you, you're in trouble. Don't let this life cause you to miss his life. Okay? Don't let this life cause you to miss his life. Because the Bible says, listen to this, that we right now are living in the day of salvation. We're living in that time right now that is acceptable before God. We've got to make sure we're going to live that way. And you've got to know that. You've got to understand that. And you've got to make up your mind. That's how I'm going to live. Well, I don't know how to do that. i got good news for you. Church can help you. Yeah, we can help you. There are people here that know how to do it. We teach the Word of God so you can know how to live, know what to do. We don't teach you how to avoid the Word of God. We teach you how to do the Word of God. So that God can use you. And, and listen, I know probably there are people here today and you're just kind of letting this go right over your head. But I can tell you one thing for sure. There'll be a time when you're going to need help. And it's so hard to play from behind. To catch up. I watch people that they, they, they're not really serving God and all of a sudden they have a tragedy in their life and all of a sudden they're scrambling to believe God and to learn about God and is there a book about this like it's some kind of formula? No, it's a life. It's a life. And you don't want to play catch up. You want to be a part of the team serving God, standing for the things of God and seeing God, yeah, you're going to be laughed at. People laugh at you in, in, in the community. I guarantee you that guy took, hung up that phone the other day. <laughs> what kind of religion is this? 
Jim Jones II or something, you know. I'm, I'm telling you, listen, but you better understand that there will come a day when the people are going to seek you out. They're going to seek you. I, I've had it happen so many times. I've had knocks on my door. Becky can tell you, especially uh, in the early days of the church when I was still working in business and just and 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 before I went into ministry full time and and that type of thing, where where I would tell people about stuff, and they'd laugh at you and mock you. And I never forget one guy at, at where I was working. He used to laugh and mock me all the time and joke around. And one day the, my doorbell rang and I opened the door and he was there with tears in his eyes and he says, "I got to have help." And I said, you, you had your chance. Hit the road. <laughs> you know I didn't say that, don't you? No, you know what? Brought him in the house. Prayed for him. He got saved. Pe people, one day, they may be your enemy. And the next day, they may desperately need your help. That's where we are. That's where we are. And, and I, I got to tell you, there are some things that are very important. Number one is prayer. And, and, and I'm going to tell you something just as important as your church family. And being in church and being a part. And I know I'm preaching to you because you're here today. But, but if you're watching online, it's one thing to watch online. It's another thing to be a part of something. I mean, I, I, I watch Andy Griffin all the time, but I never met him. Hallelujah. Father, <clears throat> just bow your heads with me right now. I pray right now for every person under the sound of my voice, whether they're here or watching online today. I pray right now for a divine conviction to come upon all of us to do your will, to live the life you have for us, to program ourselves toward you and not to our worldly schedule. And I thank you for working in our midst today. If you're here today, you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, this may have shaken you up a little bit. That's good. Maybe you've not been serving God the way you know you should. You might as well be honest about it. God already knows. But you want to make a commitment to that. I want to pray with you right where you're seated. But here's what I want to do. I want an act of faith out of you. Right now, as an act of faith, say, Pastor, that's me. I need Jesus in my life, or I need to get my life back on track. Pray for me. I want you to lift your hand as an act of faith right now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? I'm looking. Thank you. Now listen to me today. You can get out of here you said, man, I wish he'd hurry up and finish. You know why? Listen, because you want to soothe your conscience and you want to leave and do what you've been doing. But I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit is a spirit and he'll haunt you over this message today. Not in a bad way, in a good way. Everyone pray this prayer with me right now. Say, Father, thank you today for opening my eyes to truth I want to be ready for whatever comes I want to rise up I want to look up <clears throat> I want to be able to stand in the evil day and stand in victory thank you for working in my life by your word and your Holy Spirit today thank you that you forgive me of my sins that you cleanse me that I might live the righteous life that you have for me. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Thanks for connecting with us today on the podcast. And you know, we'd love to connect with you in person at one of our campuses in Shreveport, Louisiana, or in Lake Charles, Louisiana. You can get all the information from our website, lifeunited.church.